Sometimes we enjoy them on the side with a hamburger, but other times we just have a hankering for some good and hot French fries. And more than half of all French fries in the United States come from the Columbia Basin. But what does it take to turn tasty potatoes into delicious French fries? My name is Frank Martinez, and I grow potatoes. Nearly all of Frank's 1,000-acre potato farm goes toward making French fries, and it all starts with planting seeds and growing the best potatoes. We open the dirt, the seed piece will fall, and then we've got the healing dish on the rear that cover the seed and make the mound. And we have to make a big mound because our potatoes in Washington State grow so nice and so big and so many <laughs> that we have to have a big hill to keep them covered. Then a few months after planting, when the potatoes are full size, they're harvested, sorted, and trucked to a local processing plant. Now we're with our potatoes at Lamb Weston in Quincy to see how they become fries. A lot of potatoes move in and out of here. We produce over a million pounds of frozen french fries here a day. These potatoes were harvested this morning. It's kind of neat because you know they can go from being in the ground this morning to a finished in a box frozen in about you know an hour and a half, two hours. Once the potatoes arrive from the field, they're washed and the peels are removed with pressurized steam. They're moved through knives and cut into fries, then blanched, dried, lightly coated, cooked in oil, and finally frozen. This is a fresh French fry. That's very good. Then the frozen fries are packaged, laced on the pallet, and trucked to a cold storage facility. This massive building you see behind me is actually a giant freezer. Inside, a whole lot of things like frozen french fries. And I have a feeling we're going to get a little bit cold. The processors bring it to our facility. We unload it here. We count the number of pallets and confirm the identity of the product on each pallet and the production date. That's a critical element in this process. All of our customers expect rotation of their product. We take the earliest product that we've received and ship that first, so everything stays fresh. There's a compressor refrigeration system on this container that operates during the voyage over to the destination. Now we're going in the really cold part of the building where the fries are stored at negative five degrees. My ears are starting to turn numb. <laughs> How much is in here? Right now, about 40 million pounds of pr product. How long does it stay in this frozen part? On average, about four to six weeks. And you have, I see, foreign language everywhere on, on some of these boxes. We export from here around the world. Yeah. I'm turning into a popsicle. All right, shall we go back outside? Yeah. OK. <laughs> then when it's time for those fries to continue the journey, the pallets are trucked to the Port of Seattle. 90% of the potato products that are exported through the Port of Seattle are frozen fries. Those fries will get loaded into refrigerated containers. Those containers will come here by truck and then they will be plugged in so the refrigeration is maintained until they're ready to be loaded onto the vessel. And then those refrigerated containers will be loaded on, the refrigeration will be maintained during voyage, and then they'll arrive in Manila or Seoul or Singapore or wherever the frozen fries will ultimately be consumed. Yeah, so we are just seeing more and more. We are seeing more and more growth, and a lot of that is to service our industries in Washington State, such as the potato industry. We want to have that fantastic taste and quality that our customers expect, and we're going to deliver on that every single time. Everybody loves potatoes. Greatest vegetable in the whole world. And nobody has we have. 